Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I have uh, decided to do a very short uh, video on what is known as the SIR model of an epidemic because of the current situation of the world going around with the coronavirus, right? So the SIR model of an epidemic is a very basic model, mathematical model, uh, onto which various kind of epidemics have been devised or um, uh, simulations of various kind of epidemics have been done, which actually predict the outcome of what uh, possibility does uh, a particular virus or a particular epidemic have to get end in a particular interval of time. So we actually predict how the population or how the infection of this of any kind of epidemic will happen over a certain period of time. Now the SIR model basically stands for, so S stands for susceptible, that is these are those people in a particular area. So if you are considering any particular area, let's say town or city, so the total number of people who are living in those area who are capable of getting infected with the virus those people are known as susceptible who have the ability to catch the virus then i stands for the infected people these are those people who actually get infected with the virus when they come in contact with the virus or any kind of infected people and the third category is of the people who are known as recovered so at some point of time the infected people might transition into what is known as the recovery phase and then those people who transition into a recovery phase we call them as the recovered people right so start uh, i would just uh, do this particular model so I, I will show you so in this video i'll be describing the model how uh, do we actually write a set of differential equations to actually define any kind of biological model into a mathematical term and then i will show you how to actually code for the model and simulate it and to see or to predict the outcome so please stick uh, till the end of the video and hopefully if you are really enthusiastic about uh, doing these kind of stuff that is modeling any kind of epidemic model or a biological system in general, I have a lot of uh, ideas with that. So you guys please stay uh, until the end of the video and just uh, watch it how to do the simulations of this model as well. So as we all know that the coronavirus started off in Wuhan city of China and then the first very first news of its spread came around um, so it came in the Middle East and after that eventually the virus has uh, infected across uh, globally and there are various kind of uh, uh, things going on like economic crisis is there people losing their jobs so there's those those are the different aspects which I won't be talking about but I will be talking about how actually what are the difficulties that we actually face before simulating any biological system so if you uh, so before proceeding on with the mathematical modeling i would just uh, first of all briefly describe how the model works so let's say we have a, a town we are considering a town in which let's say thousand people live right so initially all the thousand people are in the category of susceptible now keep in mind this model is also known as compartmental model because we have three compartments here that is one for susceptible one for infected and one for recovered so it's also known as a susceptible model so initially initially the total population uh, of people who are living in that town all those fall in the category of susceptible people because all of them have the uh, ability to catch the virus so let's say if any virus comes and attacks the uh, population and some of them actually acquires the virus so those who acquire the virus they transition into another compartment known as the infected phase so these people are then shifted from the susceptible phase to the infected phase and eventually there will come a time when the infected people are treated with any medicine or some kind of vaccine and these people then transition into the third phase what is known as the recovery phase and then we can say that these people are totally recovered and they now don't have any ability to infect any other people further so this is how basically the SIR model works out now the first or the major step that we face here is to how mathematically formulate the model so we know that we have three compartments here. So what we do is that we define a certain rate via which we can actually uh, predict uh, how a person is transitioning from one compartment to other. So the very first transition that happens is between susceptible people and infected people. So the people who are getting converted to infected from a susceptible group and that transition is denoted by beta. So beta is nothing but the rate at which the susceptible people are getting converted into infected people by acquiring the virus. And then eventually, the second transition is the infected people when treated with vaccines or medicines they get converted or they transition into the recovery phase and that is denoted by gamma so gamma is also known as the rate of recovery and if we combine all those three together we uh, call what is known as the final model and if you look at the final model more closely 
we have to define certain set of differential equations to actually describe how the model functions. So uh, I would like to uh, take your focus on the very first equation here. So here we have defined S, I and R which is the population of susceptible, infected and uh, the recovered people at time t. So, uh, uh, so what here happens is that let's say if we are considering a population uh, of uh, 1000 people in a town. So initially what happens is that when the virus infects the population, all of the 1000 people have the ability to get infected. So we say that the S is 1000, right? Now let's say some of them gets infected and uh, they get converted into the infected people. Let's say out of 1000, uh, 20 people get infected, right? So the number of population uh, of infected people in that area becomes 20 and the number of susceptible people in that area uh, reduces to 980 because 20 of them get con uh, con converted into uh, infected people. And out of those 20 infected people, let's say five got recovered. So now the population of recovered people becomes five. So now if we add all of these three together, that is the population of susceptible, that was 980, population of infected which now becomes 15 and number of reco recovered patient, which is five. So if we add all of them together, we get what is known as the total population, that is the thousand people. Right? So this is the first equation that we know of. Now. The second and the most important thing is to define what exactly happens at the start of the infection and that is when t is equal to zero or in mathematical terms known as the initial condition. So what happens in initial condition is that let's say when a virus infects a certain uh, area of people same uh, let's say we consider the same town where thousand people are living so initially the number of recovered people will be zero. Right. So initially the number of recovered people will be zero because no vaccines has been created or no one has been treated or we don't know how many people are infected. So thereby the number of recovered people will be zero because we don't know anyone who, who are actually infected. Right. Uh, or those who are infected, we don't have the vaccines or medicines yet to treat them. So therefore the number of recovered people will be zero. And let's say uh, initially what happens is that at t equals to zero, a particular area will have mm, probably very less number of infected people, let's say one, just like in case of Corona, there was only one person that was initially infected. So the initially, uh, there will be only one people, let's say one, or sometimes it might be two or three because we haven't tracked down the actual number of infected people, right? So initially, let's say we have only, we can have as low as one people who is infected and the rest of them fall into the category of the susceptible people. So let's say at time t equals to zero, we have certain uh, susceptible people as zero. At time t equals to zero, we have a certain amount of infected people that is I zero. And at time t equals to zero, we have certain amount of recovered people that is zero because no one is recovered, right? Now, when once we know these parameters, what we do is that we define the differential equations to actually uh, see how these populations are actually changing or transitioning with respect to time. So the very first equation is known as ds by dt, that is a rate of change of susceptible people with respect to time. Now we know the transition that happened between the susceptible group to the trans, uh, infected group was denoted by beta or it was governed by beta. So therefore we know that this is the transition rate at which the susceptible people will be getting converted to infected ones. So we know it will be beta. But along with beta, there will also be a population, we have to multiply the transition rate with that of population of susceptible people as well as infected people because we, uh, because the transitioning that is happening, the transition that is happening between susceptible and infected, the population that is involved in that transition is that of susceptible and people. So we have to consider the population of susceptible as well as infected person as well. And the negative sign basically denotes that there is a decrease in the population. So if there were initially there were there were thousand people and out of them ten got infected, then the number of susceptible people decreased from thousand to nine ninety. So that's why we have to show a negative sign as well. The Next uh, differential equation is to define the rate of change of infected people with respect to time. Now defining the differential equation of di by dt is a bit complex because we have to consider here two facts. The first is the uh, amount of people who were getting converted from susceptible to infected. So when we define ds by dt, we put a negative sign because this was the amount of people who were actually getting uh, converted from susceptible to infected. But if you look closely, this is the only amount that is actually getting uh, converted to DI by DT, right? Because if there were initially, if there were, uh, let's say, 1000 people and 10 of them got infected, then there is a decrease of 10 in DS by DT, then it becomes 990. But eventually, that 10 is actually the increase in DI by DT because those 10 are get, actually getting converted into infected people, right? So that's why we have to add the same thing, but it will be a positive here because it's increasing. But we also know that some of the infected people 
who yeah, some of the infected people are also getting converted to recovered people, right? Uh, if they if they are treated with vaccines, they also transition into the recovery phase. So there there will also be a decrease uh, in the amount of infected people. And we know that the transition rate defining the people transitioning from infected to recovered was gamma, and therefore we have to also multiply with the population of I because infected people are only getting converted to recovered one, right? So that's why you have to multiply it with gamma times I. So this will the this will be the differential equation for the DRBDT, and eventually the uh, DRBDT that is the rate of change of recovered people with respect to time will be gamma times I, nothing but this. that is the amount of people who are actually decreasing here will be the amount of people who are actually increasing here. So it will be DR, uh, gamma times I. Now, if you look at the curve, so this is what a curve of uh, SIR epidemic looks like. So I will be quickly defining how the curve looks like. So let's say if we are considering the population of thousand. So here, what we have done is that we are uh, here uh, we have normalized the graph uh, to a, a scale of zero to one. So point eight means eight hundred people, point six is six hundred people, point four is four hundred, and point two is two hundred people, and one is thousand people. So as we say initially, when time t equals to zero, thousand people were able to get infected. They were in the susceptible group, and as the time goes on, these susceptible people now actually gets decreased because they are getting infected. So the number of susceptible people will be decreasing, and the number of um, infected people will be increasing with respect to time. And that is what the graph is showing here. It's increasing. But also, as the number of infected people increasing, some of them are also getting recovered. So number of recovered people are also increasing from zero. So as the time goes on, number of recovered people are also increasing. But there will be a time. So here we can see around 30 or around uh, 22 or 25. We can say. Uh, time 25 days when the number of susceptible people will be so low that there won't be enough people to get infected. At that particular point of time, the infection will stop and eventually it will start decreasing because those of the infected people who reached here now they will be converted into recovered people. So the number of uh, infected people will start decreasing and the number of recovered people will start increasing. So this is what an possible probable outcome of uh, a SIR model looks like. So now I will be showing you how to actually uh, model. the uh, graph so here i have my uh, google collaborator and i'll be using my python language here to show you how to actually uh, model out the parameter right so first what we do is that we import certain packages in python uh, such as uh, numpy so the function that we do is that we import numpy as np so numpy is the package which actually contains all of the mathematical uh, Let's uh, this uh, formulation such as Fourier transform or any kind of addition subtraction. And wherever in our code we have to use numpy, we have to write numpy. We will be writing it as np because we are importing numpy as np. Second is once we are done with importing all the packages, next thing is we have to now plot our curve as well. So for plotting, we have to import another package which is known as matplotlib. So we will import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. And finally, we will import From scipy dot integrate import odient. So odient is nothing but our uh, the model, the solver for our model. So this uh, using odient we will solve our model. Now the very first step is to uh, define the uh, constant parameters of our model. So for example, the very first constant parameter was beta. That is the rate of transition of people from susceptible to infected. Let's say uh, so it can vary from for epidemic to epidemic. And from area to area, for, from for different area, let's say we are considering it's point two. So point uh, with point two, the rate of uh, susceptible to infected person is point two, right? And then the rate of recovery that was gamma. So let's say gamma is our one by twenty. That is for every twenty days, uh, like one person is getting converted or recovered, right? Now the next thing will be the total population. So total population we know will be nothing but the ini uh, initial population of. So total population. Let's say for a particular area, we define the total population of thousand. Let's say we have an area uh, where thousand people are there. So the initial population of infected people. Let's say we start a model with one. Let's say we have in that particular area we have only one initial person who is infected. So the initial value of recovered people will be zero. Therefore, the initial value of uh, susceptible people will be total population minus the initial population of infected people minus the initial population of recovered people. So now that we have defined all our uh, Normal equations. Next thing is to define our model. So in this, what we do is that I define my SIR model. So this model will basically contain all the differential equations to solve my model, and I'm giving two arguments y and t. So y, I will be defining it as an array which will store all the information of uh, my differential equation, that is ds by dt, di by dt, and dr by dt. And t is another argument that is uh, which uh, t is the argument 
which my model will take to simulate uh, it for a certain interval of time, right? So first, I'll be describing my uh, model that is dy will be np dot zeros, uh, and it will be three because there are uh, basically three uh, differential equations which are involved. That is ds by dt, dr by dt, and uh, dr 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 by dt. So I have to also uh, uh, make my model understand that at what value the each uh, array will store. So my uh, susceptible, uh, the number of susceptible people will be stored as the y zero. So y zero means that the zeroth element of my y array will have the uh, will contain the value of this. Similarly, i will be equal to the first element of y and r will be equal to the second element of y. Now that I have defined it, now I will be defining my differential equation. So dy zero, that is that that is ds by dt, that is negative beta times s times i, and this will be divided by total population of n because we have to take the proportion out of it. So we will be actually calculating the proportion. So this will be n. Mm -hmm. Then dy1 uh, that is di by dt that will be equal to beta times s times i divided by n minus gamma times i which was uh, the equation of there and dy2 that is recovered will be equal to gamma times i. So now that I have defined all of my values uh, for the differential equation I have to return my address I will return in dy. So next step is to uh, give the time frame uh, over which I want to simulate my model. So t will be equal to np dot uh, lens space. I'll be running my model from time zero, so zero days until let's say 200 days with an increment of 50. So 50 is basically the time step uh, over which I want my model to simulate it. I also have to give initial values. Uh, so y zero will be my initial value. So the initial value of susceptible will be s zero. Uh, initial value of infected will be i0 and initial value of recovered will be r0. So these values will be taken from here, which I have defined. Uh, once I have given the initial values, I will be solving my model. So solve and I will be using ODN to solve it. So my ODN will take what is known as the argument. So ODN will take the first function that is my SIR underscore model because I have to solve this one. And because I have given two arguments here as well, so the, uh, for the value of y, it will take y0 as initial value and it simulate it for time t. So this is where my model is complete. Now I have to plot my uh, outcome. So I will be using matplotlib that is plt dot plot. I, on the x axis will be my time. On the y axis will be my value. So sol zero means that sol is basically solving my model, and the zeroth value of sol is nothing but the susceptible here value. So sol zero is nothing but so this means uh, on x axis will be my time, and on y axis will be the population of susceptible people. And because it's susceptible, let's give it a color. Let's say uh, yellow. And let's label it as susceptible. And then I will be plotting uh, time versus my infected population. That is one because it's infected. Let's give it a color of red and label it as infected. And finally, my recovered so sol two and because it's recovered, let's give it a green color and label it as recovered and also I have to label my x-axis and y-axis so to label my x-axis x label and it will be time days and my y label will be the population and I have to show the legends as well uh, of what it is so plt dot legend and then finally plt dot show to show my model and I'll be running it so here we can see that my graph almost interprets the same thing, right? So here we can see that the number of susceptible people are going down with the increase in the time. Number of people, those who are infected, increases with time, but after some time it decreases in value. And the number of people who are getting recovered increases with time and eventually it reaches the saturation point and reaches the value of 1000 around 200 days. So this is how you run a basic model of an SIR or any kind of epidemic. But keep in mind, this is a deterministic model. That means we know the outcome of it. Later on in my videos, I will be also showing how to actually uh, simulate a stochastic model whereby you can actually predict the actual outcome with real time uh, inputs to the value. So, and uh, I hope you guys uh, like this video and if you like it, please give it a huge like, 
share it uh, subscribe to my channel and if you guys have any comment you can if you have any ideas you can comment down below and i have some ideas with my uh, with me as well so uh, you can comment down your ideas and if we if i like those ideas maybe we can work it upon together and maybe we can come up with some good models to predict certain outcomes and uh, of this uh, uh, coronavirus because there are various kind of projects which are out there which are actually calling uh, students to uh, give their model or to submit their model so if you guys have any idea uh, you can pin down in the comment below and we can work it out together to you know make it a good uh, model so thank you and have a nice day